Testament historical book, Book of Acts, four chapters. Book of Acts, four chapter, verses 18 to 22. Shall we stand for the reading of the word? Yes, sir. Then with verse number 18, let's read together. And they called him and commanded him not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of teaching. But did they John answer to say unto him, Where did he find himself? Or did he find himself? Tell you, Jesus. For we cannot but speak the thing which we have seen and heard. So when they had Sometimes folks are going to hold trial on you, on their job. 
you know what I'm wrong to defend yourself. At that club meetings, in the barber shop, in the beauty bar, folks gonna hold trial on you. But then when I look deeply into this, the more I see his that 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 it really wasn't Peter and John on trial, it was Jesus on trial. And Jesus is on trial today. Every effort to eliminate Christian right, every effort to belittle the believers gathering, Jesus is on trial. Every move to eliminate prayer from schools, prayer from sporting activities, prayer in public places, is a trial that has Jesus at his victim. Every attack that you face, every attack, accusation that comes against you, you're a true believer and you're living for Christ. Yeah. If you're living a distinctive lifestyle, like you crossing up with the rest of the world, that's something different. <laughs> well, you're not on the problem. And Christ is not on the problem because you're just the same as the rest. But, but if you have denied yourself, taken up your cross, you found in Christ, if you walk in circumspectly in the world, if you've laid aside every weight and sin that so easily beset you, if you're trying to let your light shine, if you're trying to influence the world as to another life, to another savior, to another government, to another Messiah, to another control, you won't be put on trial. And if you say, Rip, I, I, I don't believe I'm on trial, you need to check it. <laughs> See, the world does not put it on on trial. The world put the Christian. Right. Those who have a backbone and stand for Christ. You don't have to be arrogant, you don't have to embarrass anybody, you don't have to cuss nobody out. But just stand for something. Stand for something. Stand for something. Because some of you stood for something during the Christmas holiday, you were on trial. Because some of you standing for something right now in your family, your own problem. Assimilation. It's not your game. The transformation is. If you're assimilating, it's no problem. Fall in line with us. Then I help you to understand that after you fall in line and you're assembly, you're assembly, and after you fall in line, the people you fall in line with, the people you assembly with, they don't come back to <laughs> Once folks can get you to buy into that system and to that thing, yeah. once they can get you, you see, because folks are not satisfied until you're in the same boat. They don't want to say that she is living, he is a, a good example of, that to bring you down. I want you in the same boat. I want something on you, so that whenever you rise up and try to tell me, I can put it back in your head and say you did this and then you did this and this. And the best way I can do it with confidence is that I see you, and you do it with me. Listen, 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 listen. Every attempt by liberal theologians to discredit the burning and burning, the miracle, by the resurrection of Jesus, they are voted guilty. So Peter and John are going to trial. And now after the trial, let me fast forward, they, they are commanded not to speak or teach in Jesus' name. See, they couldn't find anything wrong with them, so they did punish the Jesus. When folk can't find nothing wrong with you, they'll punch you your religion. They'll punch you your sacrifice. They'll punch you your, your, your commitment. Oh, yeah, she go to church every Sunday, but oh, yeah, he ain't Bible class, all right. But, but if they're punch, that is something you're doing wrong, but that's something you're doing wrong. And that's the thing about comparison. You see, when you compare yourself with another person, you will always come out with a comparison looking good. Because why? Because when you compare yourself with another person, you're going to choose the baddest or weakest person to compare yourself with. You always will compare.
pride yourself with somebody you're doing a little bit better. You're doing a little bit better. That's why the Bible said, Jerry, now, God, see, God is going to move apart and he's going to give it. So then don't be content and satisfied because you can look at an individual and say, you know, I'm doing better than that. I, 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 I live better than that. I'm not doing that type of stuff. Don't be happy and satisfied by that. God knows your heart. And, and the God who had the first word in the beginning, you're going to have the last word in the end. So it doesn't matter what you say about other folk, all the folks, other folks say about you. It's not what matters is what God knows about all of us. Because it is he that we have to give an account to. Yeah, that's, listen, the, the, the purpose of putting Peter and John on trial was to eliminate Jesus. But I got good news for y'all. And I got, 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 got a, a, a good word of hope for you. Be of good courage. Nobody, no organization, no government can eliminate Jesus. No group or system can put God out of business. God is in business. And he's in the business to stay. He said, behold, I'm coming back. And I'm going to pay every man according to his work. He said, behold, I'm coming back. And I'm going to train my church. That I die. Nobody's going to put the creature the church out of business. And just because you see what happened in you Filipino know, West, and see what happened in the United States at 370 and being weakened. Don't don't draw your conclusion from that because in China there's 7,000 people coming to Christ every day. 70% of the churches are led by women. Don't worry about the organ ministry. God called women to preach. God called women to pass. Don't worry about that. God called whatever you want. This is God's church, not me. The church is here to the, the, the state. Here the state. The church is flourishing in third world countries. They don't have the distraction that we in the West have. They don't have anything but the trust in God. You don't hear what I'm saying? We, we got so much over here. You know, we got we leave out of baseball into football, and out of football into basketball, and out of basketball back into baseball, and we throw hockey in in between. And so forth. We got a whole lot. That's just important event. But there are other uh, activities that are going on. We got to dance and we, 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 we have to this and we have to that. A whole lot that's crowded upon us. And then uh, one, 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 they said that uh, now coming to church is just another event in an overbooked schedule. When I find that rep, rep, I would be here, yeah, but I tell you the truth, I got this on Wednesday night, I got that on Tuesday night, and I got this, and then I got to go to that, and then I have to do this, and then we, but we, have, we get so busy. You see the thing, the thing that he wants you so busy that you have no time for God. You have no time to feed your soul, no time to develop your spirituality, no time to fill your mind with the things of God. Why you think some of us don't know what truth is, Christ? Because you learn more, you learn more the things that you put your time and make your sacrifice in. If you put time in the Word of God, if you put time in prayer, your life is going to develop. And your going is going to be easier. Jesus said, take my yoke upon me and learn of me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Jesus came to redefine life and to show us how to live. Our schools teach us how to make a living, but Jesus teaches us how to live. Because it's not in the nature of things and stuff, finances and land and houses. It's not in the nature of things to make a person happy. Augustine was right when he said, we were created God. We, 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 we were created for God and God alone. And our souls are resting until they find their rest in God. You will never be completely satisfied. You will never be complete, y'all mind me saying this. You will never be contented, completely satisfied. You will never live with a sense of purpose or live for something above yourself and beyond yourself. You will never be at peace with yourself and live with a dignified sense of purpose until Jesus Christ occupy the throne of your heart. His value system was leading that and that, that reference and influence of. Listen, 
They don't feel in John, shut up. Don't speak anymore in his name. They try to eliminate. I told you no system, no group, no business can eliminate Christ. He is here to stay. Christ is eternal. He is omnipotent. He is omniscient. He is omnipresent. He is indestructible and invincible. Christ is here. How can we hold our peace? And they ask the world like you and I, how can we hold our peace? They ask us to hold our peace. And we ask the world, how can we hold our peace? How can we hold our peace? How can the church hold its peace? When we were sank in deep in sin, far from the people shore, sank in the rise no more. It was he, the master of the sea, heard out of this parent cry. From the waters of disappointment, from the waters of failure, from the waters of sadness and sorrow, from the waters of brokenness, he lifted up. How can we hold our feet? He rescued us when we were lost. He redeemed us. He delivered us. He set us free. He made us children of God. Blessed us with all spirit of blessing. Made us the city, heaven, and places. How can we hold our feet when we are more than conquerors? Blessed be his name who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. He is our refuge. He is our strength. He is the very present help in the time of trouble. How can we hold our feet? He is our life and our Great. 
those bones back together. I had to tell somebody that he is Jeremiah, not right to pray. I had to tell him he is Moses, great prophet. I had to tell him that he is Job, redeemer. I had to tell him that he is the Simon. Hey, hold my peace. I can't hold my peace. It was August the 8th, 1958. I heard the voice of Jesus saying, Come on to me and rest down burden land. Lie down, you're weary. One lie down. The head up on my breath. And it was 10 minutes to one. I'll never forget that day. Like a old church, I look at my hand, my hand. Got my feet and dig it through. And you know what I did? I got in a hurry. And I came to Jesus. That time I was very wound inside. And I tell you, I found something in him. I didn't find him. He found that. I found something in him. I didn't find him in the school. I found something in him. I found a rest. <coughs> now, unless you misunderstand me, I'm not saying I was walked straight ever since. I'm not saying I was always on the right side of the line. I was sometimes up and sometimes down and sometimes level with the ground. There were times when I did it right and there were times when I did it wrong. But he loved me so much that he stayed that way. And his hand was on me. And before I went too far this way, he me back to the center. Before I went too far this way, he me back to the center. And I almost gave up. And I got all this courage. But he said, I know your heart. I know what I want to make you. I know what I want to do with you. And Jesus just kept working on me. And I am where I am. And I'll tell you something else. I ain't going back. I ain't going to turn around. I like it this way. I tried it the other way. I tried it the other way too. And some of you old folks still trying it the other way. So I got to the point of just serving the Lord. Everybody, some, some folks, the only thing they're good at is growing up. <laughs> and all fools are not young. <laughs> and John said, how can we hold our peace? We have seen his glory in the face of the church. Glory in nursing home, glory in hospital, glory, glory in great cross, glory in the Boy Scout, Girl Scout, and every organization designed a better life for humanity. He said, We see Christ and we can't hold peace. We have heard his voice in dark moments of our lives, saying, Be not afraid, I am with you. Be still and know that I am God. I am your refuge, I am your strength, a very present help in the time of true trouble. My peace I leave with you, my joy I give to you. I can be all our peace when he has given us his joy and his peace. One and third verse, I'm coming to a close. I'm going to come somewhere else. They got that the message over. In being let go, I did. They couldn't, they couldn't really pin nothing on. And the people had believed the message. And so they said, we would like, we would like to lock y'all up, keep y'all locked up. We would like to kill you. We'd just like to banish you on some house. But we're afraid of the people. Because the people like your message. The people love your message. The people believe in your message. The people are acting upon your message. So what they did, we said, we're going to let you go. And, and when they let them go, they went to their own company. They went to the rest of the believers and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. When they let them go, they went back to the rest of the members in the church. What I'm trying to tell you. Though it was only Peter and John who went to trial, in reality, it was the whole church on trial. And then the whole church took up the matter. What I want us to understand is that when Satan attacked one of us, it is in effect he has attacked it, all of us. Don't, don't get all, all excited and, 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 and all jubilant because your brother or your sister fall and fail. You hear what I'm saying? When, when I'm under attack, or when your brother is under attack, when your sister is under attack, when your sister succumbs to drugs, when your brother is overtaken by God, remember this. If you don't remember that, your house is next. So I'll knock at everybody's door. This apartment lock at everybody's door. Injustices and security knock at everybody's door. Your house is mixed. 
We must fight this battle together. We must pray together. We must stand against evil together. See, if I win, you win. If you win, I win. We got to pull for each other. You don't hear what I'm saying? And like sometimes they know that the Denver Broncos are going to play against uh, this other team. I can't think of the team right now. But they think they all know it. Okay, they burn out. They burn out. They burn out. They burn out. See, so then, Denver Broncos are going to play against the Pittsburgh team. Wouldn't it be strange if, if the Bronco quarterback, but I'm assuming going to be man, would sit back, take the ball, and throw it deliberately into the hand of one of the Pittsburgh defenders? And then the Pittsburgh field running back breaks through the hole and just take the ball and throw it to the defender. <laughs> that would be strange. Y'all want the same team? Well, how, why, why are you stepping in? Y'all got my question? You are my team, I'm on your team. Where are my people helping the enemy? By talking about slandering, tearing down one another. We are not be helping the enemy. By praying unnecessarily, those people in the Christians and their faults and their pain and their weaknesses. We are not be helping the enemy. Satan is strong enough to fight again. You and your yes. brother by himself. He doesn't need any help.